So you saw the first slideshow, which was on identifying the Fender's blue butterfly. This second one is on setting up your Fender's blue butterfly census. And uh, some brief introduction here. The butterfly was listed as endangered. A uh, recovery plan was created. And as the plan is implemented, the population should recover and uh, eventually they'll meet the Fish and Wildlife Service Endangered Species Act criteria for changing their endangered status to threatened and downlisting it to delisted. Uh, how do we know if this is succeeding or not? Well, because of your census work and uh, the annual monitoring of the populations is required to support each stage of the delisting. So we're going to look at the monitoring protocols and the uh, metric we use is the number of males. Uh, females are more important to the population, but the males are easy to observe, easier to observe and the, uh, but the monitoring is a bit complicated by the presence of a second species, the silvery blue butterfly, that is actually quite difficult to separate from the Fender's blue without capture. So that uh, changes the way that we approach the field work. So the Endangered Species Act uh, involves uh, definitions of take, which means to harass, harm, pursue, shoot, hunt, kill, trap, collect, uh, all kinds of things like that. And for the Fender's blue butterfly, this could include altering the area where it, the population lives, uh, killing butterflies, killing larval host plants. Uh, the nectar sources are also important. And uh, when you do your census, you will need to capture Fender's blue butterflies. And that is regarded as take and requires that you be covered by a permit, either yours or uh, somebody else's. And also you should try and keep track of the numbers of Fender's Blues that you capture because that's all part of the permit process. So here's take, this is an amazingly big take, burning prairies. Uh, the take here will, is killing the uh, butterflies or the larvae anyway. And uh, a lot of them will be killed when the uh, prairie is uh, a controlled burn takes place, but this is good uh, in the long run, they recover. So the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service allows this kind of management because the short term loss is followed by a longer term gain. And uh, another thing of course is uh, Fenders Blue are not up in the national forests and public lands. A lot of them are actually on private lands and do make sure that you actually have permission from the landowner to access the property for placing uh, markers on the property and find out if the landowner would like you to notify them when you visit the property. This is all common courtesy. So error. So the uh, year to year uh, counts uh, vary a lot. There's a lot of uh, different, there can be differences in the behavior of the species, of its uh, reproductive success. And uh, also you can have problems with your uh, sampling during the flight. You could have problems with weather, uh, with wind, rain. Uh, you can have problems of the terrain and the vegetation. Uh, you could have problems with the uh, ratio of the FBB to the Fender's Blue to the Silvery Blue Butterfly. You could get random sampling error if you didn't manage to catch enough of them. And in the field, the, wi the wind may well be your worst enemy. So you're going to mark transects. There's a video about this. Uh, you'll need pin flags or some other markers. Somehow or other, you need to indicate 
to yourself where the transect is located. Uh, you may need a GPS unit to set up your transects and locate the ends of them. You're going to somehow record data. Uh, you'll, you might need to use your phone as a voice recorder. You might have a separate voice recorder. Uh, you can actually write your uh, field data old school down on a piece of paper. Or... Uh, you, you may even want to record it directly on a, some sort of uh, electronic device into Excel. But whatever you do, uh, you know, you need to be set up and experienced of doing it. You're going to have to record the data quickly. And then if you're sensible, you'll transcribe it right away and prevent accidental loss. Because once you've lost the data for a, a transect, that's it. You know, that census is gone. You can't get it back again. So, uh, if there aren't very many butterflies, I just use clipboard, the data form, and a pen. Uh, it's slower than recording the data, but uh, for me, it's, uh, it's a very reliable method. You'll need a butterfly net, a nice soft one. You'll see a video about the, uh, what you need here. And some a bottle, if you need to collect the butterflies very carefully in a bottle and uh, to identify them, uh, to, to tell whether there's a fender's blue or a silvery blue. Uh, a useful tool is close focusing binoculars. You might be able to identify the butterfly without capturing it. Uh, what else do you need? Uh, counters are useful if you're doing modified peak counts. And uh, you'll need Defender's Blue Butterfly Monitoring Handbook for ready reference. And you'll need to have Microsoft Excel uh, file, with spread, a spreadsheet for data entry after you've done your census. So there are three levels of assessment for the Fender's Blue Butterfly. The simplest is presence absence. You conduct a survey when you might expect to find a sign of its presence. There is a peak count where you uh, just count the males when you think it's around the peak of the plate. You'll usually do up to three counts here. And the third one is the most complicated one I'm going to spend most time on, and that is distance sampling along transects. You'll need to conduct five or six censuses during the uh, flight of the adults and uh, before, at, and after the peak. There is a fourth method, which is very uh, accurate. I mean, it gives really good estimates. Mark recapture, where you have to mark the butterfly and then see if you catch it again. And this is the most accurate census method, but uh, we haven't used it very much for the Pender's Blue. So there's a video on setting up your transects. Do this before the flight, maybe in April. I like to get mine done, start mine in March. Before the butterflies emerge, then you're all set and ready to go. As soon as they come, you can start counting them and you don't need to be messing around with pin flags. So probably the site's been mapped before, you know where the transects are, maybe some of the markers are in place. Uh, you'll use your GPS unit if you need to locate the endpoints, and then maybe use a GPS route on your uh, GPS unit so that you can uh, walk the line. Follow the route, place pin flags along. It doesn't really matter. They don't really have to be that straight. And you, it doesn't really matter how far apart they are, but uh, you need to be able to see them while you're walking the line. And it's best if you can see two or three because uh, that, that's, uh, that gives you your uh, uh, direction on the, on the transect very easily. If you don't see one, uh, you could... Actually, you're not necessarily on the transect when you're walking towards it. And uh, remember, the vegetation is going to grow up in May and June, so 
make sure your pin flags are nice and tall. And if you think your vegetation is going to be so tall that you won't be able to see a pin flag, then, you know, get something that is taller that you can see better. So what happens if your, uh, you have obstacles? What happens if things have changed since the last census? You might want to exclude areas. I'll, I'll just deal with that in a minute. If you have multiple transects, uh, use two alternate uh, colors of pin flags because it's very easy to access to, when you're chasing a butterfly and then go back to a line, it's quite easy to get on the wrong transect. And that is a huge waste of time. So if you know you're on a blue one and you're walking towards a red pin flag, that's uh, uh, the wrong direction. Go back to the blue. So, you must follow your uh, transit. You can't, you, you can't wander around, and that includes wandering around a patch that you don't like to walk through. Maybe it's horrible. Maybe somebody sprayed the blackberries and then didn't move the vines, and they're like barbed wire, and you're trying to walk through them. Well, that is a problem because uh, if you decide to change your transect and go around these patches while counting butterflies, you're, in, you're introducing a big bias into your survey. You're oversampling the areas that are uh, easy to walk through. And those are also the areas that the butterflies like best. So what kinds of things can you do to make sure that you're able to walk along your transect? Well, <laughs> you can trample it or cut. You can early in the season, you can take some clippers or something and just trim some of the, uh, whatever the whatever's in your way, just trim it out of the way so that you can easily walk through. And remember, you know, when you're walking, you're looking for butterflies. You're not trying to, uh, you're not staring at your feet to make sure you're not gonna trip over something. And there are other ways of doing it as well. You know, if uh, part of your uh, sampling area has grown up with scrub and since the last year, and you're pretty sure that that area is not attractive to butterflies, uh, you can reconfigure your sampling area. So here, for instance, uh, Let's say that this is your sampling area from last time. And these are your transects in red. The uh, butterfly patches are in green. So since that time, something horrible has happened. A whole lot of scrubby stuff has grown up in the middle. It's now very difficult to walk through. So what can you do? Well, uh, you could simply say this is no longer in the sampling area and take that out i'm not going to do these and uh, i'm just going to do the parts of the transects so you're going to reconfigure the ends that is really tedious you don't want to do that probably the best idea here is to uh, go along here until you get to this patch if you're not able to forge your way through this then simply stop recording and go all the way around to the other end of the transect and then start recording again. Oops. Uh, this is okay. You know, if you're pretty sure there's no butterflies in here, then you can just census this part and this part and your, because your ends of the transects are still in place, you, the program will just sort of uh, average your sample over the whole area. It won't matter that this area with no butterflies or very few butterflies in was not sampled. So you leave them in place and then very carefully uh, go around without sampling and then start again on the far side. That is an allowable way of dealing with a very nasty patch of vegetation.
or maybe you're pretty sure that there are that this area does not have butterflies or has very few butterflies so few that you know it's not uh, not a good use of your time to be walking these very long transects and not seeing anything. The butterflies tend to be close to the, uh, the host, uh, the larval host plant, the Kincaid's lupin. And if they're over here and over there, then you can simply reconfigure. You could have one set of uh, transects here, one set here, and then the program will. Uh, simply uh, estimate the, the numbers in these two patches. And this is now no longer part of your sampling area. You need to know the length of your transect in meters. Hopefully you have that information from last year. If not, you can, there are various ways to measure it from your GPS or you can calculate it from your, the end positions of the transects. If you have the two ends, convert them into universal transverse mercators instead of latitude, longitude. And these are one meter units. So every one UTM unit is exactly one meter. And then you can just use Pythagoras, the sum of the squares and whatever, hypotenuse, so just calculate the length of the hypotenuse using the north, northing and easting uh, values for your UTM. So that's the northings, one minus two, east, uh, the eastings, one minus two, and then that squared and uh, find the square root of it, and that'll be the length of your transect in meters. This is the Excel formula. To so just type that into the uh, into a spreadsheet it's, uh, cell using these numbers that you recorded on your GPS, that will give you your length, and you will need that. You need to uh, insert that into all your butterfly observations. Okay, so we'll stop there, and then the next. Uh, Next one's going to be on actually conducting the census. If I can turn it off.